His show wasn't it wasn't supposed to turn into a conspiracy show, but figure it the fuck out. Go solve the problem. Yeah. Epstein wasn't the problem. And I, I in the in the wake of uh Huawei um uh chief financial officer getting exonerated and Canada really considering letting Huawei deal with the 5G thing. All of a sudden, we got to quarantine China and everyone from China is bad because they got the fucking sniffles. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, we couldn't convict the bitch. We can't get the company shut down. Everything's going to keep going. Oh, no, China's bad. They're all going <laughs> to kill us with a virus that's literally killed less people than fucking vending machines. <laughs> And bees and whatever the fuck else we talked about that day. Wine court. There's a lot. There's literally ten like household things that have killed more people than the coronavirus every year. Go listen to that episode. I forget what it's called, but we, we cleared this up a month before it fucking happened, Gordon. I solved this one. Yeah. It literally did not take all that long. So Mark, oh, it's the tree one. It's right. It's the falling tree one because it was the falling tree kills a hundred people a year. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Go back and listen to if a tree falls in the forest and only idiots are around to hear it. <laughs> and I still can't believe that guy died from that. Oh, that, we, that everything we talk about on that episode we can reapply to the, to the fucking coronavirus because <laughs> we point out the top like hundred things that have killed more than a hundred people a year. <laughs> Um, oh, it's just funny. <laughs> God damn it! It's I don't I, I get that mainstream media is all in the pocketbooks of a handful of people. We talk about that all the time. In Canada, it's two people, but the general populace can't be stupid enough to not see past what's going on. It becomes just it's routine now. Yeah. That you know. Whenever a president's in trouble, Iraq gets fucking bombed. Yeah. Um, it's literally it's every time. We're calling now there's this we gotta quarantine everyone from China. We can't let anyone from China into the country. Really? In the middle of a the year long fucking trade war with China and you can't get the head of the company convicted. All of a sudden, everyone from China is bad, and we're just supposed to bite that. Oh God, they're right. We've got to not like Chinese people now. All I gotta say is that there's, there's any truth to this. Do you know how many people would be infected in Vancouver right now? Yeah. You think there's not ch- Chinese travelers coming back and forth from Vancouver every goddamn day? Come on. Or mailing I'm, stuff. I was on a plane from Ontario to fucking uh, Vancouver. And half the fucking people on the fucking flight were Chinese. I can say that for a fact because the people I got sitting beside were so Chinese, they actually didn't even speak English. I had to be their interpreter for these stewardess. No, I'll give you orange juice. If I start seeing a lot of crossover between fentanyl use and coronavirus, then I'll be like, all right, it's coming for China. We got to deal with it. (laughs) Once fentanyl users start dropping from coronavirus, I'll get scared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we all know it's not going to happen. Uh, this is just blowing my mind. And uh, I don't know. China doesn't really do a lot of PR for China because they don't give a fuck. But you think no. some Chinese official would get on the news and go, "Look, it, it's only eighty fucking people." <laughs> That's it. I'm fucking. I don't know how much juice I have on my computer, but while Gordon tells us about his next story, I'm going to look some shit up about China. <laughs> um, Alabama yesterday. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> in, Scott, in Scottsboro, Alabama, there was a massive fire that killed at least eight people and destroyed dozens of boats um, at a marina. Uh, basically, there's a, it's like, like houseboats and that like a trailer park sort of thing and a uh, fire started somehow one of them and it very quickly spread across and people were moving from boat to boat because the docks had caught fire so they had no way of getting off the dock and running to the to uh, the ground 
Uh, what happened? No, I'm just. Aren't the boats on the water? Well, that's the thing. So, not everybody died because of the smoke. Uh, a lot of people died because they jumped in the water and died of hypothermia. So, that happened. How? <sighs> Didn't the water put the fire out? <laughs> Not until the fire reached the water. When it's burning on top of the water, the water doesn't jump out of itself to put it stuff in. Well, it happened really fast. Get to shore. Sure. <laughs> the picture is incredible. There's one shot of everything lit up. Uh, and it's literally like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm counting 18 boats on fire. It's just a line of them. Um, every one of them just lit up. They're all every, they're all on fire from the first one to the last one. It's just a wall of fucking flames. Uh, docks and all. So, yeah, there's... If you're on one of the far docks, you're kind of fucked, but um, it's the hypothermia thing. I'm not quite understanding because, uh, A, you're not that far from anything. So I don't understand how you could... There's no ice on the water, so I'm not understanding how people die. Well, hypothermia can get you really fast. Yeah, but there's no... I don't see it being cold, because A, nowhere in this picture am I seeing anything that looks like it's remotely cold. Well, I'm not mentioning anything about it being, like I said, cold water, but it's not saying it's not frigid, it's not freezing waters. Well, if you can get hypothermia at like plus seven. Is it? Really? I'm pretty sure it's it's a lot higher than you would think it would be, but oh, okay. uh, I don't I don't understand how I don't know the I don't know it's Alabama. What do you expect? Yeah, exactly. They said the whole thing. So within 15 to 20 minutes, the entire dock was in flames. All the boats have propane tanks and gas tanks, so each one of those lit up too. So it's just a big fucking mess. So Alabama. Yeah. Hypothermia can set in anytime your body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius. Yeah. So, so, in other words, if you have to jump in cold water, move your body. Don't overextend yourself. You don't want to exhaust yourself, but keep yourself moving. If you so see you fire can... on the water and it boats are blowing up around you, get to shore. Get to the nearest dock that's not on fire. Row, motherfucker. <laughs> climb up to a boat that's not burning. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't know. That just if you're on a boat and it's burning, like start throwing buckets of water on something. It can't be that fucking hard to figure out. Oh, uh, screw you. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, no, Florida. Yay, Florida man. Um, so this dude. He actually went viral last year on a video where he got into a street brawl with another man while dressed as the Easter Bunny. Don't know if you, ever, if you saw this video. It's pretty humorous. Uh, guy's in a full-on buddy costume and starts beating the shit out of another guy in full costume. Like, stuff your body in a costume, not just, like, face painting and a head thing. It's, like, an entire fucking costume. It's amazing. Um, well, it turns out he's back in the news again. This time it was to avoid a, an attempted hit and, hit and run arrest. Uh, he drove his motor- motorcycle through a stop sign and crashed into a carport, which collapsed and damaged the car before it fled the scene. Um, when the deputies responded, the neighbor said that they spotted the guy limping across the yard. This is genius. Um, deputies went to his home and saw a car leaving, his, uh, leaving the driveway, so they discovered him wearing the bunny costume again in the back seat, and he said that um, it, I wasn't in any crash. I'm the Orlando Easter Bunny. Google it, is what he kept telling them. <laughs> he's, he's booked in jail and charged with leaving the scene of a crash. <laughs> yeah. You're... You're dumb. <laughs> Good. Um, I just want to go back to this because I'm not going to get over this until it's done with. Mm. 2018 statistic, 
19,424 people die every day in China. 19,000 people a day die in China. So what the fuck are we talking about 80 people for? (laughs) 19,000 every day. 80 have died in a week from this fucking thing. That doesn't even scratch how many are going to die today. Yeah. That's less than the hourly rate of many people die at every hour. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Is, it, is this a non-story? Absolutely. The death toll rises to a whole fucking 80. Well, guess what? 19,000 more are going to die of something else in a day. And again tomorrow and the day after that. So how is this a thing? You know, like I said, we've both been saying this from day one. It's again, as soon as they said that it's it's not as it's not as bad as SARS. It's not as deadly as SARS. Like, well, SARS was fairly deadly. Six hundred and seventy thousand smog related deaths a year. In China, 670,000, and we're talking about 80. We're not talking about the smog. No, no, can't talk about that. Can't talk about China and the smog. No. Worldwide, this, we, worldwide, these deaths aren't going to come even close to what smog kills every year. Just in China. So I'm calling bullshit on the fact that this is a story at all. So there's something, there's definitely something else with this. 333 deaths from coal mine failures every year. That's Eight. four times the amount, roughly. I could keep going. Didn't a hundred and something die in a coal mine accident in one accident? Oh, definitely. But the average is 333 a year. Jesus. <laughs> uh, 400 and, oh, sorry, 4,172 non-accidental deaths due to long-term exposure to lead. <laughs> Wow. So, really, why are we talking about this at all? Uh, Sorry, kids, but I can't be the only one. No, can't. It just just doesn't make sense. But, yeah, here we are. Um, All right. So, (laughs) moving on. (laughs) We got to find – I'm I'm putting it to bed for for, – coronavirus until the the headline comes out Eric Norgo right this is fucking nothing um, <laughs> or or until it comes up and says Gord died from it then we'll know it's serious yeah I, I don't see that happening <laughs> that is why. Um, I don't understand why people are falling for this crap it's starting to hurt my brain um, it's making me think that more people in the world need to listen to Eric and Gord that's all there is to it Fully agree, my friend. And figure shit out for yourselves. Um, God damn it. 19,000 people a day. I had to tell my mother that. She won't believe me. I don't care. I'm telling her anyway. <laughs> As my mom's figured out the Google thing. It's great. Every time I tell her something, she runs and Googles it. <laughs> and then she gets mad and doesn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a that's a personal joy, by the way, when that happens. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. But she's like, That's not true and I don't believe it. And then she's going on she thinks I don't know. Yeah. And then she's Googling. And then she won't talk to me for an hour. <laughs> well, yeah, what'd you Google her, Mom? Nothing. <laughs> recipe. Shut up. A recipe. <laughs> ah, right. A recipe for being wrong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I think really we're gonna have to start scouring some 
more interesting stuff for the rest of the week because I too I like that. 